Fire is dangerous, but we are not cavemen. What's up, guys? I've been getting a lot of comments about that induction sterilizer that I use inside my steel air box, so I thought I'd make a video showing you guys how I make one. All right, before we jump into it, I wanna let you know that 88% of you are not subscribed. So if you enjoy my content and you think you wanna see more of it, go ahead and click that subscribe button. All right, let's get right into it. So I'm gonna teach you how to make two different versions of the sterilizer. Uh, the one I use in my videos, I use a foot pedal. That one's a little simpler to make. That's the first one I'll be going over. And I'm also gonna be showing you how to make a unit with a button on it. I went ahead and designed this little housing that I 3D printed. I'll leave the files to this in the description along with all the parts you need to make it. So before we get into this, I want to talk a little bit about this unit that I use from Amazon. It does not have a power button on it. If it's plugged in, it's powered on. So you need some form of switch to use it. You can either use a foot pedal or the momentary switch that I'll be going over. Or you have the option of using a power strip and using the switch on that. But if you do leave it plugged into a power source, it will burn itself out and it will break. The only tools you're going to need for this project are some wire cutters or wire strippers and a soldering iron. Then you also need some solder and something to maintain your soldering iron. This is the TS-100. This is my favorite soldering iron. I fly FPV drones and this works really well for soldering on circuit boards and that kind of stuff. And you can also power it portably with a drone battery. Uh, this one's kind of expensive. I'll leave a link to it and I'll also leave a link to a uh, more budget-friendly option if you don't have a soldering iron. Wait a minute. Is this loss? All right, depending on which design you use, you're going to need a couple different supplies. Now, whether you're building a sterilizer with a foot pedal, like the one mounted in my still air box, or one with a push button, both styles are going to require the same basic components. First thing you're going to need is the actual sterilizer component. It's about 15 bucks. Next thing you're going to need is a power brick. This one is 12 volt 10 amp. You want to make sure that you get a strong enough power brick to drive the coil otherwise it's not going to heat your metal. Now this power brick comes with one of these but I prefer the all metal ones but it's optional you can use the one that comes with the power brick. And that's the essentials and then you're going to need some form of switching mechanism. For that you have two options. You can use just a regular switch like this, a momentary switch or you can get one of these foot pedals. This is what I use in my still air box. You plug this directly into the wall and then you plug your uh, power supply into the back of it and it just directly switches on and off your 120 volt AC. Alright, let's jump right into the tutorial. I'm gonna start with the part that's the same for both the push button and the foot pedal unit. So we're gonna attach the coil to the unit. All right, so we're here on the workbench, ready to attach this coil to the induction unit. You're gonna need a soldering iron, some solder, and uh, so this is just regular solder, not flux core, so I'm gonna add some flux. I know this is the wrong flux, but I don't care. Now flux helps solder flow and helps you get a good joint. Just need a little dab on, on the pads where you're connecting it. And that's really it. All right, these are pretty big pet pads, and this is a pretty small soldering iron. So what I'm going to do is crank it up to full temperature. All right, the way you adjust the temperature on a TS-100, you want to push the first button to start it heating. Then you hold down the second button to get into your temperature adjustment mode. And I'm going to just stick it all the way up at 400 degrees Celsius. <laughs> This is the worst solder I've ever seen. Luckily I got a little bit of a pure lead flux core solder so this should work a little better. Alright, this solder sucked. I'm gonna I'm gonna use real solder. I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull those lumps off it but I don't really care. I think I can just solder over it with some lead. It actually flows on the connector. Okay so this is how it's supposed to look when you solder.
it flows and liquefies. I hate non-lead solder. Don't don't ever get it. Much easier. So now let's wet these leads. Notice how they actually wet. These solders are going to look horrible, but I don't care. Once the whole joint liquefies, you've got a good connection. And look for the other side. Start by warming the solder on the lower pad. This was an unintentional demonstration of the difference between good solder and actually trash. Whenever you're done using your soldering iron, it's good to clean off the tip. And then you want to add a little bead of solder right on the end. Then you let it cool down like that. And that helps protect the tip. Definitely not the cleanest solders I've ever done, but it will definitely get the job done. Now I'm gonna talk about your powering solutions. If you choose to go with a foot pedal, then all you need to do, take the female side of your power supply, and you wanna take the black, which is negative, and put it on the negative. Now this is very easy. All you gotta do is unscrew it, insert the wire, and screw it back down. Back out the screw until the wire can fit inside, and then screw it right back in. That's all you need to do for the foot pedal. In order to operate the foot pedal, you wanna take the foot pedal, plug it into the wall, and then take your power supply and plug it into the foot pedal, like that. When it's plugged in and working, you should see the light on your power supply turn on when you push the pedal. Plug in the power supply. And we're gonna see if these uh, tweezers will heat up. Nearly instantly, they're glowing red hot. Let me turn off the light and show you one more time. Right in the coil, turn it on. And now they're sterile. In order to mount this inside of my steel air box, all I did was drill three holes. I started by finding a good sized drill bit to put the power supply in. It's about 12 millimeters. And then I drilled two more holes about the width of about the width of the unit, which I put a zip tie through and I just run it through the two loops. That mounts it well enough inside of my steel air box that I can use it. All right. That's how you make the foot switch version. It's pretty simple. Now if you want to use a push button, it's slightly more complicated, but not too hard. Just a little bit more soldering. Now you could probably mount a button on your steel air box as well, or if you want to make some sort of enclosure to house the button and the thing, they're both 12 millimeter holes. Or if you choose, I created this file that you can download and print yourself. If you do choose to go with my enclosure, there's a couple steps you need to do before soldering the button in line. Now these buttons come with an o-ring. I like how they uh, cinch down with the o-ring on them. Install that through the buttonhole, slip on the nut, and give it a tightening. Now it doesn't have to be super tight, but you want it pretty secure in there. Then you got a button. Next in the base, um, as you can see, this hole is printed with a flat top. That's just to help with uh, the 3D printing process. It makes it much easier to dimension a hole. It still works like a round hole for this purpose. Go ahead and take your plug and feed it through the hole. Now this one will have a snugger fit, so go ahead and screw it in. All right, once you get it basically flush, put the lock washer on, followed by the nut. And give that a quick little tighten. The final bit of assembly is you take a zip tie and you feed it right through this hole and that's what holds your induction sterilizer in place. As you can see it fits in there rather snugly. You want to pull the zip tie down and then just cinch it down. It can move around a little bit, but once the top shell's over there clamping those in place, it's not going to move around very much. Go ahead and clip your tail. Next thing you want to get is your leads ready. The negative or black lead from the power supply is just going to go straight into the negative, just like it was before. And now this positive lead is going to need to be spliced in line with this button. 
If you place the top and bottom next to each other like this, it lets you get a pretty good sense of how long the cables need to be. I'll use this lead for the positive, solder that in there, and then that one's just going to come right in there. Uh, this one I can take about right here. This one I'll probably take about right here. Now you can use wire strippers or anything else, but you want to strip the lead on both ends. Next you want to grab a bit of heat shrink tubing. I feel like this is a little long for my application, so I'm going to cut it in half. When you slide this on, you want to make sure you slide it way down there so that doesn't uh, melt with the heat of the soldering. So just go ahead and take the two leads and put them together. Now the leads from the red wire are going to be wet from the factory. The ones you just cut are not. Now we're just joining two wires together so I'm not going to bother putting it on 400 degrees. Once it, gets, once it gets nice and hot, it should just flow right in that joint. And that should be a nice solid connection. Once it's cooled, go ahead and slide up your heat shrink tubing and give it a quick shrink. And that's it. Your button's all wired in. Go ahead and take your final lead and put that in the positive side. It's a black lead, but it's coming from the positive. Make sure you twist it all together, you get every strand in there, and then go ahead and tighten it down. All right, and that's it for the, that's it for the box. We'll go ahead and put the lid on it. Your lead should poke out right through those holes. Then all that's left is taking your, taking your M3 bolts, dropping them in the holes, and screwing them in place. If your printer's uh, dimensioned well, you shouldn't need any sort of threaded inserts or anything. It should just screw right in the plastic. Make sure you don't go too hard because it is plastic, but uh, you can get a nice uh, firm connection. That one I stripped out a little bit, not a big deal. Alright, and that's the finished unit. You got a button on top, you got your power on the back. And for this unit, you do not need the foot pedal, you just need a power supply. You plug the power supply in, it should light up. Go ahead and plug it in to your sterilizer, it should be good. When you push the button, you should see the light inside. That means it's working. We'll go ahead and test it out with these tweezers. Just like that, you've got a nice little unit that you can put on your desk. You can move the coil in an orientation that helps you. It sits nicely on its flat edge and also can stand up if you prefer that. Yeah, that's about it, guys. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out the links in my description. I got a Discord if you want to come chat with other people who are growing. I got a Patreon. I'm tracking some of my genetic projects on there. I'm making all the videos free and open to the public if you want to go check them out. And I would recommend checking out my link tree. I got a bunch of useful links in there, a bunch of supplies I use, different tutorials, that kind of stuff. Alright guys, peace.